There was a uh, standstill in Oweri, the Imo state capital, on Thursday. As Southeast leaders converged to join Governor Hopu Zodima in receiving President Muhammadu Buhari, who was in the state for a one-day official visit. And this comes at, at a time when Vice President Yemi Oshibaju is blaming the political elites for the level of insecurity in the country. That's how we begin uh, the program this morning. I'd like to begin with you, Mr. Nwankwo. Uh, so many people have read meanings into the President Buhari's visit. But looking at it from the standpoint of um, him promising the governor that he will uh, give the southeastern zone more uh, attention in the administration's infrastructural agenda, just at a time when he also met with Ohanezi uh, leadership. What are the gains of the president's visit from your observations? Yeah, the, I happen to be a citizen of Imo State. Every governor tries to make sure that the president visits to either inaugurate, not commission, inaugurate projects. And uh, that was precisely what the president went there to do. Even though a lot of critics might not see much in the projects that were commissioned. The governor himself, in my opinion, just wanted to see the kind of political capital he could make out of the president's uh, visit because he is somebody that has been in the eye of the storm. One, because of the circumstances that brought him to office, everybody knows what I'm talking about. And then the issue of IPOP and how his government have been able to manage the issue. So President Buhari coming to Oware to visit on a, on, on a state visit is a kind of you know gain for the governor. But what any concerned Igbo man or Igbo citizen was interested in that visit was that discussion he had with Igbo leaders of thought. It wasn't just elders or Igbo leaders from Igbo state. Remember the Obi of Anisha was there. The former chief um, Ebutiki mm -hmm. was also there. Ebutiki is from Abia state. Ike Wachuku was also there. The Ohaneze, yes, there. the Ohaneze president, Dr. George Obioza, was there. It is only the statement that Obioza presented that may have given us a kind of inkling into what happened, not the monologue type of press statement that came from the president's uh, spokesman, Adesina because the statement only stated what the president said he was going to do to help in stabilizing the polity, you know, to, you know, make sure that economy is improved, corruption is fought to a standstill, and then security, the security and then infrastructural development, which he said Igbo people stand to benefit more. Uh, the highest infrastructural development, if you ask anybody that Igbo people could benefit, is it Second Niger Bridge. That's the biggest infrastructure you have in the Southeast. Perhaps including the Onisha, I mean Enugu, Enugu Paracot Road, I mean Expressway which is also an ongoing, you know, uh, project. The Igbo leaders have thanked him for that because that is one project that the PDP governor, I mean government of 16 years, you know, never 
Ilu paid attention to, despite all their promises. But the concern Igbo people have is how the region has been militarized. And then extrajudicial killings have been going on. Apparently because of IPOB face up with the federal government. But what Obiozo, who is the chairman of Organese, urged the president was to make sure that he creates a, a platform for dialogue. We've seen how the federal government has opened that window of dialogue with even Boko Haram. You've seen the rehabilitation you know, uh, project going on, where they have been you know, brought home, rehabilitated, so to speak, and then given houses and then recruit them to help bring others out. The bandits, there are also some people making case for them. And some governments have been going ahead trying to see how to negotiate their way out of the quagmire they have. So what the Ibos are asking the president is that he should be, be fair. All right, Mr. Wakwo, let yes, me put you on hold and um, hear from a so-called James Hare. For you, what was critical about the president's visit and his meeting with uh, the Igbo leaders? Well, well um, just like you said, um, though they didn't allow the media to really you know, go into the whole um, meeting with the Southeast leaders, but from the statement um, put out by um, Professor George Obiozo, the President General of Oanes in Nibo. He, he actually spoke the minds of Ndibo in that there have the, the been these years or, of um, lack of communication between the central government and the, the Igbos. But so many people who want the unity of the, of the, of the country will always tell you that whatever is happening in the southeast which some people want to you know um, move out of nigeria they they, they, they are not in a, in court with them you know they, they don't agree but rather if it's, if it's something just like he said it's something that everybody can sit down and um, talk about and for george obiozo I think what he was trying to tell the president was, you have not given us that room, just like you have given to other regions, you know, for us to sit down and then begin to talk about development. He was saying something about good governance, that if you are talking about good governance, you have to be fair, you have to be, uh, that they have to be equity, whereby, and justice must also be part of it. So if you are saying you are giving people of a particular region, um, appointments you must make sure that it also gets to another region you know and from all the things he said the major thing he said there was about the the communication gap that was between the buari administration and the people of the southeast and that the only way that the president's visits will further cement that relationship and i think the president would have gone home you know to think about it. Not that the president does not have ministers who come from that region. And not that the president is not listening. The president, if the president was not a listening president, I'm very sure he won't even go. Even though most people are saying that his visit to the southeast was more political, in that the, the governor wanted to just make a statement. You know. And but to me, I think it is even good that the president went there. Because there, there'd been this fear about, oh, the president will not go because he doesn't like uh, Igbos. No. But I think for those who we are thinking that the president will not go because of what has been happening there, they've been put to shame. Because the president has gone there, and he has not only gone there, he stayed there for more than two hours. At least he inaugurated projects, and he commended the governor for it. You know, let's assume that 
those projects are worthy projects for the people who are staying in um, Owere Metropolis, you know. And for that, we want to say, okay, fine. We have the president has opened another chapter for Ndibos. And the leaders that they have now should be the ones that should be pushing for whatever agenda or whatever uh, their plans are for us to have a united Nigeria. The thing is, we do not want a divided country. Because just like George Obiozo said, that anywhere you go to and you do not see an Igbo man there, leave the place. you have to leave that place. Mm -hmm. And that is to tell you how united we are as a, as a person. Because everybody needs everybody in Nigeria. One region should not think that they are bigger than another region. And so the president would have taken that, the statement of uh, Professor George Obioza home, knowing that he has his work cut out for him. And that is for him to unite the co country. If he needs to tweak whatever thing he needs to tweak, in terms of appointment, in terms of you know relating with the leaders for for everybody to see him as a father of the nation this is the opportunity the ipop threat and um, you know the whole, whole conversation around a secession coming uh, from the quarters of uh, namdi kanu uh, and fellow uh, members of um, ipop also you know more or less was on the front burner at uh, that um, crucial meeting between President Buhari and the Igbo leaders. And uh, Professor Obiozo is, you know, quoted as saying that the Igbo nation or the Igbo uh, group is all out for the unity of the country. Uh, he, he talked about, you know, so many things, but one also, uh, one uh, rather newsworthy statement, you know, attributed to him was also the issue that um, it's a fallacy for anyone to say that the ego people, uh, you know, speak from both sides mm -hmm. of the mouth, mm -hmm. as in the, the, this, that this time around, you know, they are all out for the unity, but the president, you know, needs to uh, put his house in order, uh, ensure reconciliation, healing, uh, dialogue, you know, like have been established uh, during our conversation so far. To, to what extent, you know, do you agree with these demands by the Igbo leaders? You see, the, if you look at that issue critically, even the government that has confessed that if you go to Abuja, 65% of the property in FCT are owned by the Igbos. Mm -hmm. The former minister of FCT, Erufai, who is the governor of Kaduna State, can confirm that to you. In Lagos here, you know how Igbos are rooted. All right, Mr. Wakwa, let me put you on hold. Yes. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Pius joining okay. in from Kaduna State. Good evening. Welcome. Uh, good evening. Uh, what about you? Good evening. Good evening. Mr. Pius, join yes, the conversation. Pius, 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 Pius. Yes, I want to contribute on the... Uh, All right, we'll try to reconnect, uh, as I'm sure uh, our men uh, over there are doing to ensure that we get, um, you know, all uh, everyone join the conversation. In the meantime, carry on. Yes, the point I was making is this, that the Igbos, like George Obioza, and even the government had admitted that the Igbos are everywhere in Nigeria helping to build this economy. If you go to Medugri, the state, and most people will regard as the, the most dangerous, major, dangerous <laughs> state to, for anybody to go and visit, not to talk of Make living. Make it as a home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will see Thousands of Igbos in those areas. Mm, exactly. If you if you notice the you know the so teacher. what does what does that tell you? <laughs> what does that tell you? That sh tells you that if you want to single out any tribe, one tribe that has invested so much in national unity, the Igbos. Be ranked as number one. Asoko, you're trying to mm, yes, contribute. Yes, yes, I wanted to just uh, um, rem remember the 
teacher that um, Governor Zulu actually yeah, rewarded. You know, yes. you know she, she's from yes. the evil stock. Yes. You know? By <laughs> six o'clock, the woman yes, was, she in was school. already in school. You yeah. know? So, despite for, the for dangers. Those, yes, yes. For those people who have, you know, gone to all the nooks and crannies of Nigeria to establish, to live, to do businesses, what is uppermost in their mind is not, you know, to leave the country. But what people from the Southeast are talking about is fairness, equity. If you look around the six geopolitical zones, it is only the Southeast where you have five states. The Northwest has seven. All others have six. But any time the, dis the discussion right. is brought... We have another caller uh, in. Uzo, you're most welcome. Uh, I understand you're here with us in Lagos. Join the conversation, please. Yes, uh, I'm interested in what is being said at Adimo State because I'm from Adimo State and Manibo at the same time. Okay. Carry the on. Issue. Thank you. Yes, uh, actually, I, I'm, I'm interested I'm interested in this discussion because I am an Imo person, and I'm an Imo also. But the issue is this. We're talking about Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. What we're saying is this. For a long time, everybody has been waiting for Nigeria. But today, you find out that Nigeria has failed us in so many ways. We're saying that the Igbos are in everywhere in Nigeria. Are they most, not everywhere in the world? But we have been waiting for this particular country to be better. But, well, today, we have seen that most things cannot move on, even when they know that the contribution of the evils will make this country forward. Nobody is giving us that chance. That is why the evils are saying that if that one is failing, when do we talk about Nigeria and Nigeria? Look at what is happening today. We can develop our own area. It's not necessarily that the evil man wants to make sure that Nigeria is scattered. No, we want to build Nigeria. All right. What is going Mr. Uzo, on thank you very much uh, for that contribution uh, on the program. Just before we run out of time discussing the issue of the president's visit and his meeting with uh, leaders in the southeastern region, of course, we also have you know uh, a tag on this topic talking about the admonition from the vice president to elites, uh, saying that uh, not minding the risks to their political fortunes and uh, the, all their popularity they should be prepared you know to tell their constituencies or their constituents the truth uh, as against heating up the polity at a time like this <laughs> to what extent do you do you agree with that are elites really the problem for example if we look at the issue in the southeast how have we seen them you know taking advantage on duly of the situation there. You, know, they, you know, the thing is, one thing about the elite is it cuts across. You know, we have political elites, we have social elites, we even have religious elites. You know, so no matter what anybody is saying, what the vice president said is true. If a, if a governor or a leader, a political leader, a social leader, a religious leader comes out and say, guys, this is where I'm going to, do you know the number of people that will follow? So, and what is happening in Nigeria is most of them say these things and they just say it and they don't know that people are listening. And that is why we are having problems. The insecurity we are having today is because our elites have used the, the youth that are not employed, you know, to cause problems for us. And the vice president is just saying the truth. Because even even religious leaders, where they are even talking about, let's even use the COVID, for instance. There are some religious leaders who are saying, do not go and take it because it's 66. As simple as that. And there are so many people who have decided not to take. That is how powerful these are, religious leaders are. Same with the political leaders. When once a political leader feels that he has been cheated, and he doesn't want to go through the legal means for him to you know, get justice, he will now want to start looking for how to bring down the, the whole country. 
harming people, harming youth for them to cause problems for us. So a poor man will not go and he will not use his small naira to go and look for gun. No. Rather, it is the political leader who has money, who feels he has power. And because of that, he knows that the, the person he can e easily get will be somebody who is less educated. He will give the person God and small money because the person wants to feed, and then they will go and cause problem. So the vice president is saying the truth, and that is why we, he is now talking directly to his own set. Let me use that word. His own set of people. That, guys, let's tone down the way we are talking. Let's sit down. In fact, it is even now that we even want the elites to sit down and really look at it. Do they still want this country to be won? Do they still want Nigeria to be Nigeria? Because the thing, if we do not, if the elites don't think that Nigeria should be at peace, they too, they will not be at peace. All right. Um, I'm afraid we've, we've run out of time. Perhaps you can spare just a little, uh, just take a bite at this before we go on to the next topic. Yes. I, I want to say this fact that the president himself made this comment much earlier. And that was on June 12, 2019 at Eagle Square, when he blamed the elite that the elite sponsor. So you agree with this statement? Of course. The elite sponsored mm -hmm. the violence, you know, that had been going on, whether mm -hmm. in the northeast or south, I mean, uh, not, not, not uh, central or wherever. It is the elite. But the only problem that we have, the only problem is that we have is that the government has not been able to show that will exactly. to deal with this will to deal So with they this should elite. lead. Yes, yes. They, they, they should lead on this. The, um, the vice uh, president, former vice president Atiku Abubakar, remember in 2013, there was a famous uh, BBC house of service. He granted. It was a lead story in all the Nigerian newspapers. When he said, when he was in office, that a group of governors came to him to tell him that they were going to buy arms and ammunition to give to talks for them to win election. He warned them right. that they should not dare to do that because All right, after election they will come back mm -hmm. uh, to what, what happens to those exactly arms. Alright gentlemen, exactly. we have to move on. Uh, there will be more on John Liz Hangout and this edition after the break. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us on John Liz Hangout. Well, Nigeria is new to having ministries with names set up in ways that could either make you laugh, make you sigh, or just wonder uh, what those who came up with the idea were thinking of. And we have had the Ministry of Happiness in recent times, the Ministry of Herdsmen will be next if suggestions by Shegumi is anything to go by, even as he denies being a bandit lover. Um, well, as we call James, we've, uh, well, now, well, well, this may not even be a, a laughing matter, you know, depending on where you stand <laughs> in, in, in this um, lingering argument. Mm -hmm. Sheikh Gumi hasn't shied, uh, doesn't shy from issues that have to do with, with bandits. bandits. He has come up over and over again with his recipes for, for peace, uh, especially where atrocities leveled at the quarters of bandits, uh, you know, anything to go by. And now he's asking for uh, a Ministry of Nomadic Affairs. To what extent do you think this will douse uh, tensions and create long-lasting peace? in the north and by extension Nigeria because he has even gone on to say that no matter the bombardments by the army you will just keep driving mm -hmm. them away from mm -hmm. that place momentarily but then they will so, spread so out still come back you know the thing is we do not need any ministry we have more than enough ministries so if the bandits are going to repent we still have we have other ministries that will take care of them we do not need of see even most of the ministries that we have including the NDDC, that we, the uh, Niger Delta Development. We have Niger Delta Affairs, a ministry, because we wanted it and they've given us. Because we are I'm from Niger Delta, they've given us. What, has, what impact has that ministry done? Rather, what we are hearing now is a forensic audit and how much has been spent in NDDC. The, Niger, the, the Development Commission that they have in um, the Northeast, the hundred billion naira that they, they allocated. Go and ask them what they use that money for. Yes. Nothing. The money has gone. They've not done anything. Yeah. 
So we don't want to create any more ministry and not even the ministry of bandits. How does it even sound? Because you are calling it a nomadic. It's not about being nomadic. Shegumi has been coming up with different, different ideas. And even when we heard that the DSS actually invited him, the next thing he was out, I was thinking he would have repented from talking. But he has not stopped talking. But I just want to assume that if, for instance, it was another person, because those who have been invited in the past by the DSS, you know, to come and explain themselves, I've not heard them talking anymore. Because what they want is okay, the DSS has won them. Perhaps they didn't want him. Maybe they just invited him and they gave him a cup of tea to drink and then he came out again and he's still talking. You can't be somebody who is talking about bandits and not even just talking about, you are even glorifying them. People who go to people's homes, they kill them, they rape, they take their people's property, and you are saying that we should now create a ministry for them. Even when, I, if you read what he was saying, he said he is a lover of the country, people lover, region lover. No, you are not. You don't love the country. Because bandits are those who are terrorizing people. Whether we call them terrorists because Nigerians have been saying, call these people uh, terrorists. Whether we call them terrorists they are, they are, or bandits, they are all the no, same but, but because they are the, carrying the, guns. The ministry he's talking about now, he, he, he's, he didn't use the word bandits. So, okay, he, so, he, so those bandits, they are going to be... Yes, of, which is nomadic. Uh, let, let me tell you, he's very, he's very, very tactical. Don't forget, he has a PhD, so he knows what he's saying. For you to link banditry with nomadic affairs, what does it mean? What does it tell you? It All tells right. you a lot. All right. Let me compare your, your, your <laughs> um, analysis now with that of Mr. Wankwo. Okay, so uh, to, to for, uh, give further further now to this uh, conversation, he's saying, you know, what's stopping us from having a federal ministry of nomadic affairs where grievances and complaints of these individuals would be addressed. He talked about the amnesty, that why won't the amnesty fail? That has this <laughs> brought out reconciliation? Has this brought out healing? There are allegations, he says, of um, bandits who come down, drop their arms, and then they are extrajudicially killed afterwards. You see, they, that is where the mistake, you know, comes from. This attempt to, you know, compare bandits, bandits <laughs> and the Niger Delta exactly. militants. What was going on in the Niger Delta was a fight for a cause. A region where their resources were being taken by the center and then their environment degraded. If you go there, you won't see a piece of land where you can farm. Mm -hmm. You can't dig To say you want to get food, f water. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll be romancing with the possibility of having cancer. And it has persisted up to today. Look at the so called uh, PIA law that provided 3% for host communities and then provided 30% for. Prospecting oil in the f f frontier basin. Can you see the gap? Now, bandits are not people you should pamper. Because they have talked about giving them amnesty, mm -hmm. granting them amnesty. Now, bring them back home, rehabilitate them, and probably using the so called commission. He was talking about to reset to them. That's precisely what he was talking about. But how can we be having commission, commission for every, mm. you know, uh, Grievance, you know, uh, security situation mm -hmm. we have in Nigeria? Mm. Asuko has raised the issue of a commission that has already been created in respect of uh, the, the 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 Boko Haram insurgency in the north northeast. How how? How is it being, you know, managed? We, 
don't forget the fact that we have a nomadic education commission mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Already. Already. You Let know? me bring in NDBC from Bielsa. <laughs> Good evening to you. Uh, thanks for joining in. Carry on, please. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good yes, evening. Uh, I think, uh, uh, today is uh, my first time of calling to this program. You're welcome. So, my own contribution to uh, the in this country, what all of us need is love. When we love each other, all these problems will be over. When we remove sentiment, when we remove tribality, all these things that we are passing through today will be over. Let's come together as one family. We can achieve everything. Our from Ibo, from Aja. So what is going on? Just like what our brother said, one day I will put on the market the other day that anywhere you go that you don't find any woman, know that that place has no peace. So we are peacemakers as far as people is concerned. But as far as our problem, I don't think that is the presidency. Because I knew. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot for that contribution. Uh, but looking at taking the war uh, against banditry to the next level, uh, as we have heard many people, you know, talk about that there still needs to be done. We've seen uh, more and more governors who are exhibiting. They are not even hiding their frustration at the situation. Uh, they, they say they've tried all uh, solutions proffered, and you know, still uh, the situation appears to be worsening. To take this further, um, Asuko James, where do you think it could be the missing uh, gap? Um, tell me, the governors that we are really, really affected, Casina State Governor, there's nobody that will tell me that the governor did not sit down with bandits to discuss, to tell them, guys, drop your weapons, let's discuss. There's nobody. Is this Zamfara? The same thing. So if you give somebody who is having all the arms and ammunition at his back and call, and you are discussing with the person that we need peace, and the person wants to go the, the war um, path, the only, that is, it means that that is the only language you understand. Those who have you know, come home to say, okay, they have repented, I'm very sure that the governor will not have any issue with them. But those who have decided that they want to fight the Nigerian states, the best thing is for the, 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 the federal government to eliminate them and remove them from the system. I don't know if you read um, Femi Adeshino. You know, he was saying that is a, that is the language that most of them understand. We bought new Tucano, you know. We bought, we've been buying new um, uh, military equipment. Let's test it on them. Let's see if it's even working. So that before we now take it to notice. And thankfully, Okay. Thankfully, the military, they've been recording success. All right. Uh, well, th that appears to be a fine point. Now, let's introduce Issa. Oh, apologies, uh, Mr. Issa. We hope you can try to call back and so we can hear uh, from you uh, what is, um, you know, most critical to you at this point as we continue. Uh, I like the fact that, you know, Asuko mentioned Femi Additional. He too has also spoken out on, on this um, issue as the military continues its offensive to flush out bandits at this um, areas in the northwestern region but of uh, Sheikh Gumi has also spoken to this he has um, tagged his grouse now on this subject poor governance that you know artillery power cannot tackle uh, the problem of poor governance that he says is the bane or is the cause uh, of, of this insecurity you know, sprouting out here and there, in fact, entrenched, if you'd even, you know, like, like to use that word. W what do you think of, th of that? Yes, uh, one cannot uh, fault the fact that, you know, poor governance uh, contributed to the mess. Because if you look at the youths involved, some of them are people who had no benefit of having basic education. Governors in those areas neglected education. So when they grew up, they had nothing to look up to except to fend for themselves. But the point 
is that it is not only in, in the north mm -hmm. that you have poor, poor governance. Mm -hmm. It's all over Nigeria. All, it's all over Nigeria. So that alone cannot be taken as an excuse mm -hmm. that because the governors, you know, we are not doing well, therefore we should applaud, you know, bandits, you know, bring them and uh, pamper them. You dare not do so and think that uh, you, you will succeed. One of the last statements which Governor Masari said just a few days ago was that the mistake his government made, made. was in going into negotiation mm -hmm. with the, the bandits. Mm -hmm. Because he went all out to negotiate with them thinking that that would be the solution. And as they negotiated, they came out, they tried to radicalize them, them, offered them money, but after a while, what happened? They went back to their old ways. You know, it was at that point that the State Assembly now, uh, uh, you know, enacted a law prescribing a, you know, death penalty or life sentence for, the, for the, this kind of crime. Mm -hmm. So what is Gumi talking about? Several governors have tried this uh, rapprochement and it failed. So once that has Broken failed, down. Hmm. the next, you know, weapon you have is the weapon any state, you know, should have. That's the, that weapon of coercion. Decimate them if you don't. Mm -hmm. okay. If you do, if let me quickly admit um, Isaac from Edo State. Welcome. Hello. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Good Carry evening. on, please. Yeah, God bless you. Uh, the, I mean, I just want to let me appreciate uh, everyone that has been coming on this program, especially, yeah, especially those who have been watching, victoring on this program. Yeah, on behalf of uh, GD, now I'm not seeing GD here, but let me, for these two young guys that have been that are watching, uh, yeah. I want to appreciate your uh, deposition. However, I think the the gift or the the gift of this whole issue of the security has to do with one that the federal government said uh, they are aware of those persons who are involved in this security issue in Nigeria, and that. I think so, that they not, uh, the federal government has to choose to uh, put up the necessary uh, uh, might to try to set the new of these persons. Yes. And if the federal government actually wants this security to be solved, they know who are who and that are involved and how to tackle them. Like what Gumi said recently. I'm, I'm surprised that Gumi is saying that the way amnesty is going to deny the militants. All right, thank you so much. I'm afraid yeah. we uh, time isn't our friend at, at yeah. this time, especially on a subject like yeah. this. Just so, wrap up yes. so, so we can move on. You see, when you want to kill a snake, you don't scotch it. If you scotch a snake, your life is in danger. What you do is to cut, behead it. We should learn a lesson from the U.S. failure mm -hmm. in, Afga uh, in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Because they failed to, to decimate the, 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 the Taliban. And that's why they came back. That's why they came back. So if we are dealing with these people the way the likes of Gumi, Gumi, Gumi wants us to treat them, that means that there won't be any end to this crisis. Mm -hmm. Asuko, you're also all out for the aerial bombardments and every other incursions that the, the, the army uh, can have at this time. Yes, I am. I'm in full support. I don't want to use uh, Gumi's analogy of saying if you want to kill a rat infested, um, a, a, a room that is full with rats, mm. that you should not use um, a hammer or iron so that you don't spoil your furniture. That is not the, you use whatever you have to destroy the rats in the room. 
Because why would you keep rats in your house? That is the number one thing. Destroy the rats so that you can sleep easy. So whatever the presidency or whatever the military has for, for people in Zamfara, for them to have peace, they have to use it. Because we need peace everywhere in Nigeria. And see, there's, well, there was a day, I, there was a period, I think last year or two years ago, I went to uh, Sokoto. Very lovely place. They took me to um, lovely place, uh, places in Sokoto. But do you know, I can't even go to Sokoto anymore. I don't know if anybody will want to say, oh, I want to take a, a, a tourist, I, I want to move to one particular region or the other in Nigeria. If you Without are traveling the first now. Thought, being, uh, being yes, secure. because the first thing will be security. <laughs> All right. So if the military has to continue with this operation until the people in Zamfara, the people in Kasina, and even in Kaduna, if they will have peace, let them do it. All right. We, uh, well, our prayers and our best wishes are with our uh, wonderful soldiers now who exactly. continue to ensure exactly. uh, that the whole of Nigeria we are is behind them. Yes. Indeed, that the we whole of Nigeria them. is safe. And, and the president, even though he was speaking in the South, is I'm sure he, he also directed uh, that his speech mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. he wants to be remembered as the president that stabilizes the country mm. in terms of security, security yeah. e yes. economy, mm. and every other challenge the, uh, yes. before, if, before the government. If, if we Nigerians voted him in because they saw him as a general. So he has to perform. You know, we spent uh, five hundred well, million, million dollars. Nigeria spent five hundred million mm -hmm. dollars to buy the six uh, six uh, tokenos. Yes. So if we have so to put follow them to good use. Yes, mm -hmm. we have to put them to good use. Let's talk economy now. Uh, so the president talked about stabilizing uh, the economy and um, the naira has been on a downward slope for a while now. Only yesterday it hit a record low against the dollar depreciating to nearly 550 naira at the unofficial market. This from 530 naira. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Abdul Rashid Bawa, has warned banks against fraudulent election financing as well as foreign exchange malpractices and money laundering. The naira at an an all-time low, Mr. Wako. So many, you know, reasons have been, you know, attributed for this. The BDCs are saying the banks have become BDCs themselves mm -hmm. and are selling to cabals. What do you think the problem is? Why are we still having, you know, this recurrent slope despite the CBN's intervention after intervention? Yes, is uh, why we have this uh, crisis is because of the Nigerian state the inability of the government or even the CBN itself, you know, to, to deal with errant bank of officials. You remember that there was a time the, the, the governor asked the banks to write the names of uh, those uh, who defaulted in the procurement of uh, forex from the banks. After the government banned giving money to the, uh, the bureau exchange operators, you know, these Nigerians who, whose love for seeking rent is incurable, they devise a different means of going to these banks to procure this forex. They say some of them use fake travel documents. Mm -hmm. Once you use fake travel documents to go for this kind of transaction, it doesn't make sense. You, make, 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 uh, you, you don't care because you know that that document is not genuine. Some of them get flight tickets which is one of the criteria mm -hmm. for giving people forex. But as soon as they collect the forex, they can't go and cancel the flight. <laughs> These are issues that are dogging the market. But the fact is that it is wrong for we to continue to use what is happening in the black market and illegality a crime to use it to measure the strength of our, our naira. Mm -hmm. it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be so. 
Government exemplified in the operations of the CBN have been given sufficient money to banks to now perform the fun functions of the Bureau of Exchange Operators, mm -hmm. giving them strict guidelines which they must follow. But what we should ask ourselves now is, are they following those guidelines? And if there are some aberrant you know, bank officials, are they being punished mm -hmm. in line with those guidelines stipulated? That's, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Asuka, please um, you know, join in here, especially now that the EFCC has also spoken to the matter. We're, we're getting gradually into the, an active election season, so EFCC is you know, talking tough at this time. Mm -hmm. But looking at the impact on the economy here and there, you know, is there hope in sight? Well, from what economists are saying, they said even before the end of this month, the dollar at the parallel market is going to even hit up to 600 to 700, you know. Well, I'm even more concerned about, um, I know the ESCC is looking at the bigger picture, which is because they are going to use it for elections and all that, but I'm even looking at the small scale in the, uh, enterprises who are always looking for, oh, they want to do business with people outside, you know, or buy things from people outside, sorry, to buy things from for their, uh, for their, for their small Indeed, business, which will still trickle down to, to the their own economy, mm. you know. And at the end of the day, you can't have, you can't get dollar. If you go to the bank today, they will tell you there's no dollar. So, the SMEs will have to now depend on the black market, which is why they are buying at five, uh, five fifty. In fact, the thing has been right because I've been monitoring. The, two weeks ago, it was about. Five, five, um, five twenty or five thirteen, or three weeks ago it was five thirteen. Now it's five fifty. Like on Saturday it was five thirty. So the thing has been going up like that, and with the way it's going, the economy will. Cr I don't want to say it will crash, but I the, I feel that because it's like the uh, BDC, the Bureau de Chan, what they are doing is they are just waiting. So that at the end of the day, it will have the the the, um, the CBN will call them and then say, okay, take this. But they have forgotten that they also also contributed to this because when they gave you a threshold of not giving more than a certain amount of money, you are transacting you, millions. You, you are just millions giving dollars. millions. They told them just ten thousand, you know, per month, and then we are giving all the cabals and whoever millions of dollars because you have that you have it, you know, in your in your in your safe. But the CBN should now look at it. We do not want the economy to crash. People are suffering. People who have small businesses, who are doing businesses outside, who want to buy things outside, they want to buy these things so that they'll be able to help the economy. Yes, we know that if, when once at the official market, it is about 411 or thereabouts. Now, if it's 411, what will it cost me to get it? It is not easy for you to get it in the bank. Even when you are traveling, just like you said, if you are traveling, they will ask for everything right. that you, uh, everything. Uh, all right, Flight gentlemen, ticket, visa, let's bring everything. in uh, Mark Onjuola from Kogi State. Welcome. <laughs> Mark Onjuola, please mute, mute uh, the <laughs> volume of your TV set so we can hear you well. All right, uh, Mr. Wankwo, yes, so what options? You've talked about, you know, uh, a tougher stance uh, from the CBN and, you know, law enforcement agencies. But, you know, what other options do you see now? Th that will be our final, mm -hmm. uh, your final take at this time of the show. But, you know, how do we cap this all up? What tougher stance do you want to see uh, the CBN exude yes, urgently? I, I, I would want to see the corporates punished. We want to see people punished. And of course, the CBN envisaged that there might be difficulties. That was why it gave the order that if you have a legitimate request mm -hmm. to any bank for Forex and they denied you, they have a channel that you should report to CBN. 
and then CBN will now get back to the bank to say, this person met all the conditions for you to give him forex. Why did you deny, deny right. him? Right. So what our problem has always been lack of punishment for bad behavior. All right, Mr. Chair, well, I'm okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your contribution on thank the you. program. Thank you. Uh, Journalist Hangout today. And, of course, uh, Sukor James, it's been a delight having you. Thank you for uh, having you know, me. speak on all these critical uh, issues. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And thanks to you all uh, for everyone who called in. We appreciate all your input and those who tried to uh, join in. Apologies. We hope you can, uh, you know, talk with us uh, at some other time. That's our seven for you on Journalist Hangout today. Don't forget to join us. Uh, for the Sunday edition of the program and watch the repeat broadcast tonight at 11 p.m. From all of us here, thanks for watching. I am Kemi Fola Adeyemo. Bye now and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>